God's story of the redemption of creation impacts the whole creation. Not only has Jesus come into the cosmos to save the entire cosmos, the cosmos announces his presence. Think about our Christmas and Epiphany narratives when shepherds hear the angelic choruses themselves. When a new star appears and astrologers follow it to find this new king of kings. On Good Friday at Jesus' death, the earth groans in an earthquake. As Fred Craddock says, there is no area of God's creation so remote as to be unaffected by God's fulfillment of the divine intention. That's what we hear Jesus predicting today as he talks about his final return, when justice will finally roll down like waters and all is made well. Our passages these last few weeks since All Saints have been pointing us to this apocalypse, this revelation at the eschaton, the end of time. Last week, we heard about Jesus' kingdom and what kind of king he is and will be. To Jay, Jesus is talking about the end of time and the reality that right now is not the end of time. It wasn't right then for his first listeners. It wasn't right then for the followers first hearing Luke and who had witnessed the destruction of the temple. The end of time is not right now for those of us still gathered to say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Last week I said that when we're comfortable with the passages appointed for Christ the King, they should challenge us to look toward heaven. <coughs> and when we're scared, those passages should comfort us and remind us that Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and his kingdom is not of this world. In a sense, that is the essence of Advent. Jesus makes predictions about things that will terrify most of us, knowing as that as we live our Christian life, we will face disappointments. As we live our Christian lives, we will feel powerless against the powers and principalities of sin and death that run rampant in this world now. Topher is starting to notice when we see unhoused neighbors panhandling at the tops of exits. I know too much about how sin, death, and greed collude to make systems where people are one medical emergency or one illness or one racially motivated arrest from losing their housing to give pat answers to Topher when he asks why that person is there. I can't, as I heard growing up, blame it on themselves when I know so much more now. And then I listen to podcasts that make me mad at leaders who pay lip service to beliefs but don't actually govern when they have the power to. I ride in my car and pray for those impacted by systems of sin and pray that I will have the strength to do what I can. There are times that I despair. There are times that I want to be a nihilist or an absolute cynic and throw in the towel. Life is much easier if you're just a self-absorbed jerk. Fierro invites us in Wicked to stop studying strife and to learn to live the unexamined life. That's not the life of a Christian, a follower of Jesus the Christ, though. Jesus says in today's passage, now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads. 
because your redemption is drawing near. When you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. When you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. The first readers of Luke would have felt like the world was ending when the temple was destroyed. Jesus has warned that the world is much bigger than what's right in front of them and us. In that warning, Jesus has promised that he'll be coming back and we'll know it's happening. Whatever is facing the church, humanity, and the creation, it's not over. It's not the end until Jesus returns in final victory. It's not over until we see justice and righteousness executed in all the lands. Jesus' promise of return and judgment is how we get past our nihilism, cynicism, and despair. It's never stupid to hope. We can't live the unexamined life because we are called to care for our neighbors. Fred Craddock says the life of disciples after all is said and done is not one of speculation or observation, but of behavior and relationships. What does it profit us to navel gaze about the date of Jesus' exact return if those around us starve or freeze in the cold or lose their homes as the oceans rise? Put another way, my friend Kelly, a priest in Nashville, posted on Blue Sky this week, eschatology, the theology about the end of time, is political, but the eschaton is not a politics. You have to figure out how you're going to love your neighbor as yourself in the meantime. How to choose personally and politically in ways that prioritize the needs of the least of these. That's eschatology. But in a Matthew 25 sense, that's where Jesus sorts the sheep and the goats who ask, when did we see you? And Jesus answers them both. All of that is what we mean when we pray for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as in heaven, week by week and day by day. I ride in my car and pray for those impacted by systems of sin and pray that I'll have the strength to do what I can. I'm inviting Topher to pray with me for the unhoused we encounter and to pray that we will show love in the moment and to have bravery to work to fight the systems of sin, death, and greed, and that those at the levers of power will have wisdom and bravery too. I'm going to write this week with one of my fountain pens to all my elected leaders about at least trying to take action, just trying not offering themselves up or waving their hands in the wheels of process, trying to take action when and where they can. I know, though, that saving the world is not on me. I have to figure out how to love my neighbors in the in-between. But there is an end, and it's not here yet. So I look to the east and pray, Maranatha, come, 
Lord Jesus. Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. It's Advent, y'all. Love the Lord is on the way. Amen.